Hey everybody, Ranger Nick, stepping inside of a greenhouse over here on the campus of the University of Georgia in a place where a bug would never want to land. That's right, I'm surrounded by those carnivorous plants that we talked about a little earlier, and I'm hanging out today with Mr. Kevin Tarner. Kevin is a student of mine, actually, and is a plant technician, research technician here at the University of Georgia, and Kevin knows a thing or two about these carnivorous plants. First, Kevin. What kind of things go on in a greenhouse like this regarding teaching that the public may not know? That's a good question. A lot of things actually go on uh, teaching, re uh, teaching related activities here. This place is a living natural history museum mm -hmm. and it, the plants here sample a lot of biodiversity that you'll find all across the world and we have it all in one place. And so what we're able to do using that is we're able to get tour groups in here of students. We've even had artists and poets from UGA and we've had K through 12 audiences and we have a lot of people who come and they see these things sometimes for the very first time in their life um, at this place. We have orchids, we have carnivorous plants, we have um, primitive land plants, we have a desert collection and a rainforest collection. So all of these things are very useful to supply, let's say, scientists with the materials that they need to do research, as well as showcase in an educational way how plant diversity is a spectacular thing and um, is really capable of giving students a lot of enjoyment. Well, Kevin, that's really neat. What I want to do now is show the folks at home some of the unbelievable ways that these carnivorous plants feed on meat and feed on insects. So let's check it out like something out of a sci-fi movie. Take a look at this. Kevin the Plant Man, we've been talking about carnivorous plants and these things eating meat. I don't see any teeth on them. Kevin, how are they doing this? How are they getting insects? Well, that's a neat question. These guys right here are pitcher plants. They're a carnivorous plant that is actually native to the swampy, nutrient-poor habitats of Georgia. And they're able to eat bugs in a variety of different ways. Um, the first thing that they're able to do that no other plant can do is they're able to attract prey. And they do this with bright coloration. And as you can see here on this yellow pitcher plant, it is beaded with a nectar that the plant is producing. So they're mimicking the things that flowers normally do to attract insects. It turns out that insects happen to be one of the best natural sources of plant fertilizer. Now, by making the nectar, which is laced with a paralytic drug, which um, gets the bugs kind of lazy and increases the chance that they fall into the tubes, they're able to change color. This, this guy's white, it's a white pitcher plant, and it shows up best at night because it is a specialist moth hunter. So they're Jeez, able to do a lot of, of neat things. The second kind of carnivorous oh, oh, plant. This, this is, I, I think I know what this is, this is Venus flytrap. Yeah, but now, that's right. Kevin, when I see on TV, these are like huge and they're eating small children. Is that, <laughs> like this, is this full grown? Well, what is this? Sorry to burst your bubble, but that is actually not the case here. Okay. All of okay. these plants are actually just after insects and the enzymes that they make to digest them work best and almost only on insects. So if you want to take a Right, let's try if you want this. to prove that for yourself, let's if you'll just hit it. one of those traps where let's it turns pink, it. see if we let's can if this guy get it to chomp food. on you. Let's see. Come on, little buddy. Oh, let's see. They're so well fed here at that's Georgia. True. They don't even need any <laughs> fingers like Ranger Dick. That's you could good. probably try this guy. Interesting. Man, that's cool. Let, let's walk yeah. down here. You've got it's some Venus awesome. flytrap. And then you, what else you got sitting well, down here? This third, is wild. Third kind of plant that we've got here is a plant called a sundew, and now we have native species of these as well. But one thing that they do really well is they secrete a glue on their leaves that traps flying prey like flies and gnats. Mm. Now, once that glue holds on to a bug, the entire leaf bends and is capable of movement so that it secures the bug down and forms a little bug taco, pinches it down. And then it will digest it right there on the spot. A bug taco. Incredible. Folks, did you know that plants were this smart? Kevin, the plant man, bringing us up to speed on this. I want to show you next, if you're looking to do this at home, how can you do it? How can you grow one of these in your own house? Let's check it out. There are a number of different basics about carnivorous plants that are a little bit different than normal plants, but once you get over the hang of that, they become very easy to grow, even easier than most plants. The first thing that they need is very bright sunlight. They're okay. used to swamps without a whole lot of tree cover, and so shade they don't really like that. The second thing is that they need a lot of water. So they're swamp plants, and as long as they're kept moist at all times, they'll survive just fine. Okay. The third thing that I always recommend is that you need a special soil to plant them in. Normal fertilizer like miracle Grow, it burns the roots off of these things. Wow. They're not very well adapted to experiencing those nutrients. Okay. And so what, you, what I've got here are some simple basic ingredients. Okay. The first, is an ingredient called peat moss. Okay. And what it, it what it consists of is just 
a dried moss called sphagnum and it keeps the pH in a good range and it actually, I've got some moist moss here, it holds a lot of water <laughs> and so that is the property that you really want with this kind of environment. And the second component just adds structure and drainage is sand and so when you put those two together you get I what I call muck. Okay. So this is swamp muck and that's what you're going to plant these guys in. Okay. We actually, um, you can get all the ingredients for about $25 and then a plant of this size, they're very slow growing, will cost you about $25 as well. So for about 50 bucks, you can put this thing together. And it's just as simple as getting one of these guys in the mail, okay. turning it over, checking that the plant is healthy. But then you can plant it in a nice little bowl there and scoop some of this lovely muck in, make it nice and happy. Oh, love that. And love then you're it. pretty much done. And this is a plant that actually can live outside and experience the cold and the heat as long as it's kept moist, well lit, and there you go. You have a basic bog garden in a bowl right here. So instead of the fly swatter, you put one of these out and it's going to attract all the insects. This is incredible. Thanks, plant man. Great. So if you're an insect, you definitely don't want to make your way into this greenhouse. But as the plant man Kevin has, a little green and all, he made his way in because he's looking for that good meat just like all these other carnivorous plants are. Plant man, thank you so much today for hanging out with me. You did a phenomenal job. Learned a lot of great things about carnivorous plants. And I hope maybe you'll take a chance to plant some at your own home. You know what to do. Hop online, check out the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page. And while you're at it, Check out the Ranger Nick Facebook page and find out what I'm up to. And until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick reminding you that enthusiasm is contagious. So pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you right back here again next month. See ya.